Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Fifth Grade Math. Today, Stu and I are going to answer one of your questions and also explain a bit about how we organize numbers. Organize numbers? How am I supposed to do that? Is there some kind of number closet out there with number hangers? How do you even hang up a one? That got off the rails quickly. I think you might have just broken your own record for derailing a lesson. <laughs> and well. If you were going to hang up a number, you'd probably just use a clothespin. Oh. Yeah. Thank goodness. Because I have a hard enough time already putting my toys away. Yeah, I'm well aware. Okay? <laughs> and today, it turns out we need to answer a question from some of our viewers. It turns out we might have confused some of you about rights and lefts and place value and decimals. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that today. We're going to clarify some things. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that, too. When I was doing some practice problems earlier, I remember that you said we moved to the left when we multiplied by powers of 10. Then, you said we moved the decimal to the right when we multiplied by powers of 10. Then, I couldn't remember which way was left or right. Then, I went and got a snack instead. Well, uh, getting a snack is usually a pretty good way to help yourself get through some problems. Oh, yeah. Even if the snack itself won't solve the problem, it's good to, like, it'll help you reassess things. Yeah. Because it's hard to solve problems when you're hungry, you know? Snacks forever. Yeah. I mean, snacks, like... It's, it's an important part of anyone's day, week, yeah. life, year. Balanced diet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's important. And also, you were doing practice problems. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay? Yeah. And uh, that's the same conclusion that some of our viewers came to. Not the part about the snacks, but the part about the left and the right. So we're going to try to help make things a bit more clear right now. It'll be like we're cleaning the windows of my brain. Well, they probably need a good scrub. So let's take a look at some numbers and do a little bit of review first. Okay. In the previous videos, we talked about multiplying and dividing numbers by powers of 10. Remember, powers of 10 is a fancy way of saying multiplying or dividing by 10s. Every time we multiply or divide by another 10, our power of 10 changes by one place. Here's how we do it with multiplication. 1 times 10 is 10. 1 times 10 times 10 is 100. And 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. When we divide by 10, or 100, or 1,000, it looks like this. 1 divided by 10 is 1 tenth, or 0 0.1. Now, you might be thinking, that's not how fractions normally look. But there's more than one way to write a fraction, and you might see this out there in the world, or in Google Classroom, or anywhere. So if you see that diagonal slash between two numbers, that does still mean a fraction. Now, we have 1 divided by 10 divided by 10. That's 1 one hundredth, or 0 0.01, and then we have 1 divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10, which is 1 1,000th, 1, or 0 0.001. The fractions are also decimals, and we name those decimals by how many places it would take to make a whole. 10 pieces for tenths, 100 pieces for hundredths, 1,000 pieces for thousandths. Do you see how multiplying or dividing by 1 more 10 change the place value of the 1 each time, moving it to the left when we multiplied, and then to the right when we divided? Also, look at the pattern of the zeros. The number of zeros in our answer is always the same as the number of zeros in our problem, or how many tens we use to either multiply or divide. This is all because our number system is organized around the number 10. You might say it's the most powerful number. Every time we reach another 10, no matter what place value it's in, that's always when we level up to the next place value. Okay, and the next highest place value. If we go down a 10, we level down to the next lowest place value. 10, as it so often is, is the magic number. Okay, so I think I get that part about going up and down the place value line every time we get to another 10 or go down by 10. But how does this help me with my left-right conundrum? I think you got something on my shirt. <laughs> Sorry. It's because up and down is that, that didn't that didn't help. It's because up and down you just spread it all over. Oh. <sighs> New pattern. And yet things don't change. <laughs> anyway, it's because up and down is actually left and right when we talk about numbers. No, 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 no. <laughs> Brain exploding! Too confusing. I get it, buddy. Here's where the left-right stuff starts to come in. So I think what was really confusing for everyone is that in lesson in seven and eight, we learned that we move to the left in a number, the value of each digit increases, or is multiplied by a power of 10. We move to the right, the value of each digit decreases, or is divided by a power of 10. Let's take a look at the whiteboard here, okay? I've got the number 7,777. 
If I start here and I want to find the difference in value between these two sevens, okay, I make my jumps and each jump represents a multiplication of 10 if I'm moving to the left. So 10 times 10 times 10, that's an increase of a thousand. It's a thousand times greater. And if I went the other way, it would be divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10, and it would still be divided by a thousand. So when I'm looking at value changes in a number and I'm moving to the left, that's an increase. And if I'm moving to the right, that's a decrease, okay? And then in lesson nine, I taught you how to move the decimal to the right when you multiply a number by a power of 10, okay? And that was kind of a math shortcut, but it got confusing, huh? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of shortcuts, but left and right is really hard to remember. I know, and you know, we can tape some numbers, well not numbers, letters, to your desk so you can remember it better. When I, was so a, helpful. when I was a kid, I used to add birthmarks on either hand, and I knew which birthmark was my left and which birthmark was my right, because if I didn't know that, it would have taken me years to figure it out. Like, you can oh. see this little one right here. That's that's right, okay? And then there was one that's completely faded now, but that was left. It was like a really oh. tiny brown one. So whatever you can do to help you figure out left and right, whatever trick you use, if you use your hands like this, because like your left hand makes an L, okay? And your right hand is a backwards L, so it's the right. Like it's really important to know your left and right, and there's definitely nothing wrong with having it taped on your desk. Are you, are you raising your hand, or are you just trying to figure some things out? Uh, I'm just looking for birthmarks. Oh, okay. So yeah, like I don't know if you're going to have any of those, but because you got a lot of fur. So yeah. that kind of makes it difficult. Hard to see. But, you know, it's, it's okay. We, we do need to figure that out. But you will figure it out. I'm not worried about it, okay? Okay. And so now, the change in value, okay, and the change in where the decimal goes, it sort of happens opposite of each other, okay? So, of course, it got confusing. Oh. Yeah. And so what I should have said was, when we multiply by a power of 10, the place value of our answer moves to the left, and the decimal moves to the right. Okay? That's because the answer is getting larger. All right? oh. When we divide by a power of 10, okay, the place value moves to the right and the decimal moves to the left. Okay? And that is because our answer is getting smaller. All right? I know that was a lot. right? Nah. I mean, I'm a little exhausted just going through that. But I promise that all of you, including you, Me. will be able to understand this. Okay? Oh, okay, so, I'm ready. Let's, let's do some practice. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, Mr. Manella, I'm ready to dance with these numbers and do a boogie with the decimal. What? You know, I'm ready to learn my steps. To the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. Okay, well then, watch this decimal boogie on down the road. Here's an example problem. 378.6 times 10. Before we start, notice that the 3 is in the hundreds place and the decimal is between the 8 and the 6. We're going to multiply by 1 power of 10, so the decimal is going to move to the right, and the place value is going to move to the left. So now the 3 is in the thousands place, and the decimal is after the 6. Our answer makes sense, because when we multiply by a 10, it should increase. Whoa, the windows of my mind are wide open right now. Just watch out for birds, dude. Let's, eh. go, let's go back to what we started with and try it with two powers of 10. In other words, multiplied by 100. Okay, so we have 378.6 times 100. Again, 100 is two powers of 10. It has two zeros, so that means two jumps. The jumps are the shortcut way to multiplying powers of 10. The place value will jump two spaces to the left, so the three, which is now in the hundreds place, will actually move to the 10 thousands place. And the decimal will move two places to the right. But there aren't enough spaces. <gasps> We need a hero! And we got one. First the moves, and now we fill in that place value space with our hero, zero. We multiplied by 100, so our answer is larger. Now we need a comma, Stu. Where does it go, and can you name the number? Oh, plop it right there, between the 7 and 8. And that's the thousands comma, so that number is called 37,860. Nailed it. Oh, okay, that was multiplication. Yeah. But what in the heck are we going to do about division? Well, it's the opposite, okay? The place value will move to the right. And just like we learned in the last lesson, the decimal will move to the left, okay? So we're going to look at another example now because our answer is going to get smaller, okay? It's going to decrease, all right? And we'll see exactly how that works. We're going to go over that again. You ready? Okay. Okay, let's do it. Let's use the number 4,889.5 and divide it by 10. 
That means we would be splitting that number into 10 equal groups, so our answer will be a smaller number. Watch how the place value of each number moves to the right and the decimal moves to the left. <gasps> it worked! Oh, the answer is smaller. That's right, Stuart. You did something I love, which is check to make sure your answer makes sense. Moving spaces to the left and right might still feel confusing, but try to remember that if you are multiplying by a power of 10, then your answer should get bigger. Did it? Then you took the correct shortcut and made your jumps in the right direction. If you're dividing by a power of 10, your answer should get smaller. If it did, then you're still on the correct path. Okay, so hopefully today we helped you out a bit with the left-right dilemma. And we talked a bit more about magical powers of 10, okay? In fact, you're learning that our system of numbers is called a base 10 system. Oh. Yeah, there are other number systems out there too, okay? For example, computers, that's a binary system, yeah. which is based in the number 2, okay? Good news, though, we're sticking with the base 10 system for 5th grade. <laughs> zero, 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 one. What? Uh, I was just telling you in binary that you're my favorite teacher. I'm pretty sure that was just computer gibberish, but thanks. <laughs> you're my favorite Muppet. Yeah. Okay, and you're all my favorite students. And I just want you to know that if you ever have questions, like ask us. It's our job to like I literally get paid to explain things to students. That's my job. Yeah. And I like doing it because Working. it makes me feel like a no. <laughs> in a really satisfying way. Yeah, he loves that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm sort of kidding. I'm sort of not kidding, but I'm not kidding at all about the part where you should definitely ask questions because that's the whole reason I'm doing this. Yeah. To explain things. Yeah. To get them into that little, little brain of stews and those big <laughs> brains of yours. It's my job to help them expand and burst full of knowledge. <laughs> Maybe not quite like that, but, you know. Swell to the point of bursting without actually exploding. I ask questions all the time. He does. Every day. Occasionally they're even relevant towards education. Yeah. But mostly it's like, where are the Takis and when yeah. are we getting more Takis and can I have some more Takis? What is that? Why and he are we here? He often asks those questions with his mouth full of Takis. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. But again, we're here to help. I yeah. and any of your other teachers are here to answer your questions. That is our job, and we look forward to doing it. So please ask away. Don't yeah. ever hesitate. We're here to help. Okay? What? Can we do a quick recap? Yeah, let's do a quick recap. Okay, so to review, uh -huh. when we multiply by a power of 10, our number gets larger, which means the place value moves to the left for each digit, but the decimal moves mm -hmm. to the right. Yeah, okay? jump. Yeah, every jump is a 10. So three jumps, three tens, three zeros, three yeah. places moved. Each 10 represents a jump and a zero, and it's all tied together like a right. ball of string. And it gets bigger when you multiply. Exactly. And yeah. when we divide, it gets smaller. Okay, <laughs> that means the decimal moves to the left, but the place values of the number move to the right, and the total value of the number decreases. Yeah. Okay? Little. So. That's right, it gets smaller, yeah. okay? Same deal with the jumps. Every jump represents a 10, okay, and a zero. It's all tied together, again, like a neat little ball of string. So many patterns. There are patterns, they're everywhere, okay? <laughs> We've talked about this, that's how numbers work, man. Yeah, Repe base 10. Repetition, baby, yeah. over and over and over again, okay? All right. All right, this concludes our video lesson for today. See you next time when we cover more division with powers of 10. Bye. Bye.